Well, let me tell you a secret. Painting any subject is very similar to being an athlete. Think of the Olympians. Before they do any of their specialties, you know what they do first. They always visualize it. In their minds, they see what they're going to be doing before they even begin to do it. And it's no different, absolutely no different when we paint. We have to know where we're going and we have to have some idea of where we'd like to end up. But most importantly, we really have to understand our subject. You cannot paint anything properly unless you can first visualize it. And that's absolutely the truth, and I mean that 100%. So, especially, whoops, with something like the uh, narcissus, we really need to know where it's going and what it's doing. And whoops for me, I should have checked my <laughs> my brush first to see how dark my tone was. But I'm going to proceed ahead and finish this up. All right, so. But can you tell that I do have some idea where I'm going and what I'm going to be doing? So it's, it's not uh, a matter of, uh, gosh, what goes next or where is it or what does the bud look like? I know what the bud looks like. I just have this somewhat ingrained at this point. And uh, so I can proceed with the abandon that I want to convey. And I know the more you paint any subject, you will absolutely have fluidity. <laughs> we'll put that down. Our, our new art term is fluidity. <laughs> because you'll know where you're going. It's really, really important to know where am I going? And what do I intend to do here? What, do I have a clue? I know. Just checking, making sure my brush isn't too wet. And then I just have one more to do. And so at this point, I pretty much know how everything is to shape up or shape out or whatever the case may be. So, because I'm now doing the back view, I think I better do my stem at this point. What do you think? Hmm? I bet you're gonna agree with me. And then I can finish up the rest of my petals. See how nicely that worked out? I need to have all these little thingies. We want our little thingies. So do we understand this concept of really being able to visualize how something looks before we set about conveying it? 
that's why it can be rather difficult when we learn a new subject because we really don't have a clue where things meet up and what it's supposed to look like. So really take the time to comprehend, you know? And uh, with any flower, we should be able to draw it in our mind's eye. And for new people, you'll, you'll really see this as you go along. And for those of you who have been painting for some time, I bet you agree with me. Well, maybe I, I hope you, <laughs> I hope you agree with me. Okay, so here, this is the fully opened flower. And I have neutral tint, very strong on my brush there. Okay, like so. And then for the side view here, I can go over some of these strokes. It won't matter a bit. I'll just put my dots in there. There. Ta-da! Now next, we're going to do the sheath. And use our brown tone. And remember, the sheath really decays quickly. So we want to convey it with a much paler tone. So my stems would be here, so my sheath would be about here. And it can have a very rough aspect to it, like so. Okay, yay, yay team. Now I'm going to take my brush again and this is all, all this line work, I used a very fine detail brush because it gives me a lot more control. And I'm looking at this and I might have placed my sheath a little bit too low, but oh well. All right, so. Okay, so it's one, two, three. So I could do another line or two, or not. Okay, maybe have something coming up here. All right, ta-da! Am I gilding the lily at this point? Okay, now the next thing are the leaves and so I'm taking perline green and my northern wolf brush because I want a little bit more control than if I use my orchid bamboo okay and not too wet, I'm drying it well on the paper towel. And remember we have that blunt aspect to it. So it's kind of starts more blunt. And this could finish off maybe like so. That's kind of interesting. That's going to be all that I do with that. We'll see.
say maybe later I'll add a bit more. So I'm taking my best detail brush and some sap green. Maybe mixing it with a bit of the perlene green. Okay. And So that could maybe come down like so, okay? And then back to my neutral tint, removing a lot of the excess. Let's get a little line work here. Okay. All right, now the fun part. We're going to take our brush and I'd like to have a little bit of that green in it. Work that in. And really get it into the heel of the brush. Remove the excess moisture and then into my brown tone. The brush is held flat against the paper and just swoop around like so. Yay! Well, wow, that just absolutely worked. And this is working just super. Oh, give me a cookie! <laughs> you know, because we don't do any sketching. It's always... <laughs> Such a wonderful moment when things work well, isn't it? I think so. So you know, I just love doing my squigglies. And this tells us that this root is really alive and thriving. Okay, now I can just oh, not dark enough. Okay. This is dry enough. Okay, wow, I held my breath on that one. <laughs> oh, one more thing, I nearly forgot. I bet you're wondering, did she forget? Did she forget that? I guess are you paying attention? Yeah, so you know the yellow. And we wanna wait till the end to do the yellow because we don't want anything bleeding. No, we don't, okay. So, glasses on, ta-da-da. -da. <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm quite pleased with this. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed and learned from this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you don't miss any of the videos when they come out. So comment below if there's a subject you'd like to see me paint. And if you want to start your own brush painting journey, click on the Join Nan Ray's online class button to learn more about my live online classes. It's so much fun and you'll learn so much, I guarantee. So thank you again for watching and I wish you so much joy.